Good morning, Facebook Live and In His Presence Church this morning. We just had some church during praise and worship. And, and you know, we, we have praise and worship to CDs, but it's, it's always been such anointed music. And, and I remember, you know, my sister's heart, Pastor Linda's heart was always like, we're not having live worship until it can be anointed and on fire. And, and you know, when we went to P3, we know Apostle Ryan's worship is, I'm like, it's fire. And uh, I'm like, well, unless we're having that, we ain't doing it. And then I, I heard uh, Natalie Breckenridge's, uh, some of her worship and, and, and I was like, fire. I like, I love that. And unless, you know, and you're, and my sister always said, you know, your worshipers have to be submitted to the Father, to the Holy Spirit. They have to be on fire. They have to be prayer warrior. I mean, they really have to pray and they have to be strong and to sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. And then they have to be able to shift and move it with his Holy Spirit, especially with, with the move that's coming. And so we will go with our CDs. It's always anointed and and the ladies always, they don't talk to each other. Do you guys talk to each other? No. They just send songs and then we put them together. And and um, and it, it always, it's always, it's always a move of the Holy Spirit. Father, I just honor you and I worship you this morning. I praise your holy name. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you. I worship you and I thank you. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you that you call people. And yes, you call children. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for that. You called Samuel. And he didn't even know your voice at the time. Thank you, Jesus. So, it's fiery. I'm going to get right into the message since we're running a little behind. But are you guys okay with the fact that I'm not rushing my Jesus? I'm not rushing the Holy Spirit. When he wants to move, I just want to move with him. I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You know, so much so that if he wants to change and shift things and rearrange things, I'm like, okay, okay. You know, sometimes, did you guys ever have a room in your house? My mom was notorious for this. Every once in a while, I'd come home and she had rearranged the furniture. My mom was a rearranger of furniture. And in our house, we're very patterned and routine, and we don't rearrange much of anything. And so my mom used to always rearrange the furniture. And you know what? I used to love it because I'm like, ooh, this is exciting and fresh. Things were always fresh with me Things were always fresh. I miss I miss that woman. I've been having some emotional missing times with mom and sis and my dad and and um, I thank the father every day that I had the parents that I had and the sister that I had. I may have not had them as long as I was supposed to, but I had such precious good parents and a big sis that, ah, I don't know. You know, when you lose people that are just that great, you miss them, you know? So, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about because you guys have lost some great ones too. And so it's hard when you, when you, do you ever notice we don't always lose the sour grapes? We lose, I'm going I'm to stop right there. The Lord's like, don't even go there. Just stop that right now, Maria. Stop it. So the title of today's message is Stand Firm Until Your Breakthrough Comes. You ready for some excitement today? Stand firm until your breakthrough comes. Last week we learned how to wage the good war. In Ephesians 6, 12, New King James Version. And we're gonna we're gonna go there right now. Put the glasses on real quick. Ephesians uh, six twelve, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version. 
I'm going to be adding some other versions in here too. So I'll be going to my phone as well because some of them are really long. And, you know, I do my handwritten notes, you know. I'm old paper and pen kind of person. So Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against, that's, that would be people, right? But against principalities, say principalities, against powers, say powers, powers. and against the rulers of the darkness, say rulers of the darkness, rulers of, the darkness. of this age. Against spiritual hosts, a spiritual host, spiritual host of, wickedness of wickedness in the heavenly places. Heavenly places. I'm going to go on to verse 13 for a minute. So it says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Do you feel like we're in an evil day? Yes. Yeah. So what should we be doing? Standing. And having done all to stand, I'm jumping way ahead of myself, but this is okay. I think the, this is where the Lord wants me to go. Verse 14, I was going to do this at the end. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all all the fiery darts, say all the fiery darts, the fiery darts of, the wicked one. of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Is it some of the saints? All the saints. Okay, so last week we, we got into how we're waging the good war. Last week we found out that warfare is not just a weekend party. It's not for the weekend. Warfare continues on. So tomorrow morning, you know, even today, Sunday afternoon, no matter what you do with your family, friends, whatever, day of rest, whatever you're going to do today, the warfare doesn't stop after you leave church. Monday morning, you're going to wake up, and it's there. If you go on vacation, it's still there. And Pastor Linda would say to me when I would take my family vacations, Maria, you're going on vacation, but I'm going to remind you, the devil never takes a vacation. And neither do you from prayer. I expect you to be on prayer watch. Yes, sissy. Okay, sissy. I mean it, Maria. I mean it. I'm like, okay. And so I never left my post. Because you can be on vacation, be in the ocean, have your tootsies in the sand, but still be praying in the spirit. Amen? And I don't mean that in a religious way. I went on vacations with Sissy and we had fun. But you're always prepared to war. Amen? The devil doesn't sleep and neither do you. Okay. Okay. So, last week we talked about how we're fighting an invisible war. And as the church, we need to push the enemy back. We need to nullify and cancel his plans. We need to thwart his plans. For our lives personally, for our families, we got to be worrying for our families, friends. You know this, right? Saints of God, we got to be worrying for our families. Our friends, come on, do we love our friends? I love my friends. And the lives of others, even strangers that we don't know. It's not a season to relax it is not a season to relax i know there's an old saying you know we're in the summer and it's the lazy hazy days of summer no the lord says no it's not yeah it's hot we move a little slower in the heat especially here because we're used to the cold weather but it is not time to relax 
not time to stop. It's not time to relax. So we have to stand firm with our feet planted, having trust in God to meet our particular need at that time. What is your need? Is it a health need? Is it an emotional need? Is it a financial need? Is it a spiritual need? What is your need at the time? You got to trust that God is going to fulfill it. I've been making myself real happy in the word of God this week. Because I'm reading a, a devotional on the Psalms. And I can get lost in one Psalm, I realized. I could spend a long time there. Looking up other, how, oh, that spoke to my heart today, Lord. Woo! Yes, I love that. You know, he's fighting for you. Always. He's with you. Always. He wants good things for you. I mean, why is that a bad thing? Why are good people who want good things, pure things, bad? What does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us that in the end times, people will start, you know, calling the things that are good, evil, and the things that are evil, good. Are, are you guys seeing that? I'm seeing it. They're calling good evil and evil good. And I'm not saying everybody in the body of Christ is good. Some people need deliverance. I shared that story with you a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, and sometimes they blow their testimony. They blow the testimony of Jesus because of their behavior and their actions. We don't want to do that, do we? So, you know, I mean, God help us. Holy Spirit, take out of us whatever is not pleasing in your sight and, and, and blows your testimony. I don't want to blow the testimony of Jesus because I'm saying or doing something stupid. You know what I mean? So we got to stand firm and we have to trust our God. Sometimes we just have trust issues. Okay, because we don't see the answer right away. And again, I'm not going to jump ahead of myself, but we're going to get there. He will do what he said he would do. And I listened to Yolanda in the morning, Yolanda Worldwide, and uh, Morning Stir with Yolanda. And um, she gave that word to, you know, I love her. I think you guys should check her out. She's at 6 o'clock in the morning if you're up, but if not, you could watch the replay. And, you know, there was a point where she said, God will do what he said he will do. He'll see you through. And there's just been these prophetic words that I, I think every day he speaks through her and gives us something fresh, you know, our fresh manna. But then we stand on those words. And, and I stand on a lot of those words because I'm like, I, I'm taking that into my spirit. God will do what he said he will do. He'll see us through. And we have to trust him. Just trust God. So we do this by, by how? How do we do this? By staying planted in his word. This is alive. It's alive. It's a double-edged sword. It cuts through. It cuts through all the baloney in your life. But you got to open it up. And you got to read it. And when you read it, you can't be flippant about it. You got to be like, I love this. I love it. You got to devour this thing. It's your daily bread. It's the reason why they called it the daily bread. We eat bread. I'm not saying like bite into a Bible, okay? All right, but you know what I'm saying? You got to devour the word. Meditate on his word. I'm doing other devotionals too, but I'm just really enjoying the Psalms. <laughs> so anyways, Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to do what he started with you. He put gifts in each and every one of you. He doesn't just put gifts in pastors and, and fivefold leadership. He puts the gifts in everybody. Are you in everybody? Yes. 
So you all have giftings that the Lord gave you. For what? For the church. For building us up. To win the lost. To fulfill the call of the ministry. What ministry? The ministry of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ. To do the work. What are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to feed the hungry. That's a given. We're supposed to clothe the naked. We're supposed to help people. We're supposed to pray for people. Be kind. Be loving. Love people. You know that old song? What the world needs now is love, sweet love, it's the only thing that there's just too little of. That was back, what, in the 70s? 1965. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> okay. Burn her dates. Whoops. I'm dating myself. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was, Leslie. Back in the 60s, well then, I wasn't alive yet in 65, just so y'all know. But, but, anywho, I loved that song in the 60s. I was born in the 60s. I'll let that little cat out of the bag. Keep it quiet. I'm on Facebook Live. It ain't quiet anymore. Whatever, whatever. I'm proud of my age, man. I'm proud of my age. I use my Mary Kay cosmetics. I take care of my skin. All right, I'm just going on with the word because I'm just going right. I'm still on page one. Lord Jesus, give me strength. This might be a two-parter. Might be a two-parter. Didn't intend for it, but I don't want to rush my God. So we have to position ourselves in right relationship with God. That's the key. As his child. You know, if you're a child and you have a parent, you love your parent. You hopefully obey your parent. You want to be with your parent, right? I, I always wanted to be with my parents. If I could have been with my parents 24 seven, I would have done it. But that's funny, because that's how I feel about my father, my heavenly father. I could just be with him 24 seven. Could you imagine me just getting nothing done more so than usual? My good Lord, anoint me and keep me focused, Father. I know y'all pray for me, I know. Anywho, I just love to bask in his glory. Justin, you remember we'd be driving in the car, I'd get into crazy worship and he'd be like, Mom, just focus. Because I'm like, woo! He's like, no, woo in while you're driving. Put your hands on the steering wheel. I'm like, worshiping God. Do you remember those days? Then you close your eyes when you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I closed my eyes. Probably just briefly, honey. Oops. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Did I traumatize you? Yeah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I break the soul trauma that I placed on my son by closing my eyes in worship in the car while it was moving. But he encamped us with angels. Okay. All right. Well, I repent. I repent. Oh, I'm sweating, Justin. You call mommy on something. Probably okay. That's all right. I'm sorry. All right. Back to the message. That's what I get for calling him in on it. He's like, that's right, Bob. That's right. We have to position ourselves in right standing with God as his child, knowing that we have spiritual authority over the kingdom of darkness. Who has spiritual authority? You. You have spiritual authority. I spiritual. <laughs> We're not over this. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to traumatize you. I got, I, my sister yelled at me, do not close your eyes while you're worshiping in the car. Because when I was doing speech therapy and I'd be driving far, I'd be in the car for a half hour. And, you know, 
And she's like, Maria, I'm praying in tongues, worshiping my eyes. She's like, what are you doing? She'd call me, what are you doing? Because I'm praying for you. I go, oh, good. She goes, I'm praying for, for protection. What are you doing? I go, I'm driving. I go, oh, praise God. You know, she goes, you got your eyes closed? No. Yes. <laughs> well, briefly, I'm not keeping them closed. Maria, open your eyes. You can worship with your eyes open. Oh, God, I miss her. Don't you miss her just telling us off? <laughs> she used to tell me off all the time. I love it. I love it. It was great. I loved it. It was great. Okay, anyway, sometimes I think she's looking over the balcony of heaven going, Oh, Father, send, get, talk to my sister. Speak to her. She's a little off right now. Off in La La Land. Anyways, so our prayer life has to be increased and we must pray without ceasing. That's what 1 Thessalonians 5.17 tells us. Pray without ceasing. Why? Because we are in spiritual battle when? All the time. Pray without ceasing. When the Lord tells us to do something in his word, do you think he means it? He does. He wants us to pray without ceasing. That means don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. All the time. Remember, the devil never sleeps. Neither do you. Warriors. This is a warring church. We always have been. We always will be. So we must pray always. Always praying, listen, the will of the Father. Not our will. Not our will. The will of the Father and that his will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught us how to pray. He taught us how to pray, to pray the Lord's will here on earth as it is in heaven. Well, if you start looking, this is going to be a two-parter. If you start looking at heaven, do you think when we're praying the will of heaven on earth, what are we praying for? Health? His kingdom dynamics? The kingdom. The heavenly kingdom. That's what we're praying. That's what we're supposed to be praying here. His heavenly kingdom. Oh, Father, I thank you, Father. Let your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven, Father. Give us this day our daily bread. His word and, and our sustenance, I believe. And then what is Jesus teaching us? This isn't in my notes. But what is he teaching us? To forgive us. Forgive us our trespasses. What are those? Our sins. Some people say, I don't sin. Yeah, you're a liar. You sin every day. We sin every day. Sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly. We're not supposed to be like intentionally sinning, but we're in our earth suit. And we should, and if we were walking in the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit 24-7, we wouldn't be sinning. But we get into this flesh, and so we might get mouthy with other people, sarcastic. We might get, we might get mean or angry, right? We might get angry. No, we can be angry, but the Bible tells us be angry, but sin not, right? We might get jealous, and you know that. That's an ugly three-eyed monster, jealousy. You know, we get envious of things that other people have. We... We covet things sometimes, that's covetousness. Sometimes we have idolatry in our lives. We put things above God. That's the sin. That's our sin nature. Now that's not to condemn everybody, but what's the key? Repentance. We, we should be on a daily repentance walk. You know, the intercessors, we, we hop on... Um, with Atlanta Hub, and we join in in their weekly uh, intercession. And, you know, I love the way they do it. They, they go into repentance first, I believe, yeah. And then it's uh, thankfulness and gratitude, right? And then they, they, you know, have prayer points, and they're praying in tongues, and it's loud tongues. I love it, you know. Anyways. Because they're like Pentecostal. We're Presbyterian-ish, but they're Pentecostals. 
I can't wait to go to P3 in October. Because I get all Pentecostal. You guys think I'm wild now sometimes. Don't I get a little crazy? Poor girls went with me last year. It's like, wow, ah, I love it. I was like, oh. They start doing Pentecostal things. I'm like, I'm right up there with them. You know, because I was like, oh, I love it. You never know I grew up Catholic. My sister and I are like, we were meant to be Pentecostal. We go to camp meetings, we're like, we were meant to be this way. Because it's just so great. I love it. It's so freeing, isn't it? Oh, you feel free and alive. Anywho. So, all I'm going to say, I don't even know where I was. Where was I? I keep doing this. <laughs> Holy Spirit leads me in different ways. Let me go back to my notes. So Jesus taught us to pray. God bless me. Really, you know, guys, you know I'm in the middle of a house flip and I'm tired. I'm tired. I pray when I'm doing my work, my manual labor, I'm praying all the time. But it's busy, it's a busy time. We're getting ready for the school to open and it's busy. So I gotta be praying without ceasing, you know? You could be digging in dirt and praying in tongues. You could be taking nails out of a wall, screwing things in, praying in tongues. You could be plastering, sanding, staining, painting, and praying in tongues, amen? So anyways, I was saying that we got to pray. And I love the way they pray. They start with repentance. And then they go into thankfulness and just thanking God. You know, we should be doing that on the daily. We should be daily repenting. Father, forgive me. Forgive me for any sins that I committed, either knowingly or unknowingly. And then we should really go into not just like a two-second repentance. Like, really mean it. You know what I mean, Father? I'm sorry. If I sinned against you and I hurt you, I, I, I'm sorry if I grieved the Holy Spirit in any way. You know, and then thank him. Thank him for who he is. Be in awe of him. I'm awestruck by God. So now so many people pray daily, but oftentimes people give up right before the breakthrough. You know, they get tired from praying and standing for so long, believing God for something. They can get tired. They can grow weary. They can get frustrated. You know, the Bible tells us to not grow weary in well-doing, right? That's what he means. Don't get weary, don't get tired. I know you're frustrated, but keep fighting. Keep praying, keep praying, keep going. We can't afford to stop and get weary. We can't afford to stop praying right now especially right now in this season. We can't stop, church. You know, November is a very pivotal time for this country. Body of Christ, we can't stop. And you know, I, I know, I, I always tell myself, Maria, don't bring politics behind the pulpit, but I got to say something to you. Because, because pastors for so long were silenced, the church couldn't even speak about right and wrong. And then I always get concerned when there's pastors that I'm like, how are they discerning? How, when they promote something that's clearly wrong biblically. And, and I always go back to Pastor Linda always saying, because she was in that time frame where pastors were silenced. They weren't allowed to say anything at all. And so um, went on for a long time. And so Pastor Linda would pray for wisdom. And Father, what can I say? How, you know, because she'd still want to direct people and she would still want to lead them into the right direction because people would say, Pastor, I need wisdom to pray or to, to vote. And, and she would say, you know, well, vote the Bible. And people, you know, people would say, well, I don't know what that means. Vote the things of God. And then, you know, Pastor Linda would be like, Lord, how much can I tell them? 
you know, and, and the father gave her, you know, vote for, God is concerned about, he gave her two very heavy topics. He's very concerned with the babies. Do you remember this? And he's very concerned with Israel. So her and I would talk about it and we would get very concerned when they weren't protecting the babies and children and the unborn and when they weren't or the elderly or human beings just for that matter and when they weren't protecting or standing with Israel. Those are two very serious things. I'm telling the body of Christ this now. You got to pick your candidate who supports those two things. Period. We also have a candidate right now that publicly lifted up the name of Jesus. Pub Jesus Christ was uttered out of his mouth. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, I accidentally let a cat out of the bag. Anywho. Don't get me started. I'm telling you, I'm not trying to get political, but body of Christ, this is a very important decision. And I know what the Father's been putting on my heart, okay? It's a very important time and season that we are in. And some people might be like, God doesn't look at the United States. He looks at the, you know, the Middle East. He looks at Israel. Okay. But the United States has always been a powerhouse. And we have strong, and we are a strong country. We've always had strong influence over the world. Ah. There's a reason why I bring it up every week. This is just in my heart. I almost can't stop myself. The nation needs Jesus. The nation needs Jesus Christ. The nation needs, this country was founded on Jesus Christ, on godly principles. Everything that was written, the Constitution, why do you think they've been trying to get rid of the Constitution? Why do you think they've been trying to get rid of the things that our founding fathers put in place? They did it on purpose and they did it for a reason. Amen. All right, let me get back to my notes real quick. We're gonna do a two-parter. I'm gonna just stop in a little bit, but I wanna get um, I wanna get through one more one one full page here. So our prayer life might or might not might, it must be consistent to advance the kingdom of God. We have to fight the good fight of faith. We have to gain territory. For God. We have to thwart the plans of the enemy. And then not only do we do that, we take the, the territory for God. What do we bring down? The kingdom of heaven, right? Here on earth. We, we move in the kingdom dynamics. And that's also praying for people. That's all those things that I talked about before. But then we maintain it. See, it's not okay for us to just do this for a while we have to maintain it we have to maintain an atmosphere of the kingdom of heaven we have to maintain our godly principles we have to maintain the word of god see when when the body of christ did not do that when they were the sleeping giant for a long time and now the body of christ is waking up and starting to take their rightful place but when they slept for a long time, they let a lot of things go. They didn't move by the Holy Spirit. They didn't move in his power. They didn't do the things that they were supposed to do. They didn't give the prophetic warnings. You know, the gift of prophecy was shut down in a lot of churches. And that's not okay. That's not okay. And because the church did that, we have what we have. We have what we have. But the good news is we can stop it. How? By praying, 
by praying, praying without ceasing, praying the will of the Father. What is the will of the Father? To save souls. What did Jesus say? Beloved, I pray that, you're, that you would prosper, 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 prosper above all else, that you would prosper in all things, even as your soul prospers. So what does God want us to do? He wants us to prosper in all things, our physical body, our emotional body, our spiritual body. Justin, do you want to head downstairs and take a peek? Or go that way, either way. Okay, so I'm going to say this. We have to gain territory for God because the enemy has tried to steal. What does he do? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he does. That's his job. That's his day job, his night job. That's his job. But Jesus came to give life and life abundantly, more abundantly. Amen. Amen? So we can't be lackadaisical in our prayers. This isn't time for us to be like, mm, I'll pray if I want to. Well, I don't have time. We got to make the time. We've got to make the time. We can't give up until we obtain our breakthrough. What are you needing as a breakthrough? What breakthrough do you need? What breakthrough does our country need? What breakthrough does our family need? What breakthrough do our friends need? What breakthrough does this congregation need? What breakthrough does our school need? What breakthrough do all the schools need? What breakthrough does our region need? <laughs> Come on. So we got to fight the good fight. We got to wage the good war. The good war. Amen. We fight with Jesus Christ. We've got the Holy Spirit abiding in us. We're the glory carriers. We got to be carrying his glory. We got to be worshiping him all the time, standing on his word, believing his word, praying his word. Why? Why do we pray his word? Because the word is alive. It works. Amen. It's his word. He's not a God that shall lie. He's not a man that should lie. Men lie. God doesn't. Amen? Amen? This is why we stand on his word. When someone's trying to speak death or, 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 or a ceasing of something that you know is God's and it's a ministry of God's or you know in your heart something, you gotta, you got to stop it immediately. Stop. Basta. That's enough. That's enough, devil. You gotta stop it. You gotta rebuke the person. Why? Because you can't let people thwart the kingdom of God in your life. You can't let them stop what God has for you. Are you just gonna sit there? Are you gonna sit there and let the devil just like walk all over you? Are you going to sit there and let the devil take everything? Okay, I'll just say, okay. You know, someone loses their job. I lost my job, and I don't have... Are you going to just sit there and take it? Are you going to go get another one? You know, the doctor tells you something you don't want to hear. Are you going to sit and take that? Are you going to say no? Are you going to say, I hear what you're saying. I heard what you said. Acknowledge it so they don't think you're a complete loony tune. Okay? But then you sit there and you know. No. I know in heaven there is no illnesses there. Amen. Nothing. There's no illnesses up there. 
What are we supposed to be praying? The kingdom of heaven down on earth. So we better be praying health, wholeness, wellness for people, prosperity for people, and yourselves. There's people, they don't even want to pray for themselves. you got to pray for yourself. Well, I'm feeling tired and anxious, and I, I'm feeling this. I'm feel Stop it. Debbie and I know. Oh, I'm so tired, Pastor. I'm just tired. My sister, oh, right, Debbie, that was a big mistake. To call Pastor Linda and say we were tired about it. Thank you. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop speaking that over yourself. There's power in our words. You know, and, and come on, is it just me? Or do, does everyone speak things that aren't right sometimes? Come on, y'all speak things that aren't right. You gotta speak life over yourself. Oh, Father, good morning. I thank you, Jesus. My body is stealthy and it's strong. I'm like a deer running through the forest. I can't believe the strength I have in my mortal body today. That's what I've been talking over myself. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, that I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Not some things. I can do all things. And people, how many times did you remember that? When I first had to step into positions. You know, I was already running the school full time. And some people, Pastor, you can't do that. You, you can, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Who strengthens me is what I can do. Because I can't listen to, I can't, I can't, no, oh, 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 I can't receive your negativity from my life. I got to say what Jesus said. He said, wasn't it to Peter? Get behind me. Get thee behind me, Satan. I don't know if he said thee. Get behind me, Satan. I know I'm referencing my sister a lot today. I don't know why, because she was fiery. And she trained us up. I keep saying this to this body of Christ. We have been equipped. I was equipped. You were equipped. There's not one person in this church who has not been equipped. And then even for newbies, there are new people coming to this church. You're being equipped. Equipped for what? The ministry. What ministry? Whatever the Lord calls you to. Whatever. We've got to get to the point where we're like, you know what, Father, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do it for you. Are you willing to shift and change? Sure. I always say sure, and then I'm like, what am I changing? What are we doing? Wait, wait, what did I say yes to? In praise and worship many, many years ago, many, many years ago, I'd like you to stop. I'm in praise, and you know when I'm in praise and worship, what's the matter, honey? I have a parent outside. Ann, can you take care of that for me? In the back, a parent. It's a father. Um, so, anywho, it doesn't take much for me to lose my train of thought. I don't know where I was going again. I'm always on fire, and then I get distracted. I'm like, I don't even know where I was, okay? But I go back to the fire. I'm always talking about Linda lately. Do you want to know why? Her birthday is coming up. And, ah, uh, I miss her. I miss my sissy. I'm happy she's in glory. I, 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 you, can't, you don't buy that story, right? Well, I'm happy for her that she's in glory. Great job, Linda. That's great. But I miss her. I said to the Lord last night, I go, I just miss my sister so much. And he knows that. He knows that. So that's why I'm talking about her a lot today. So forgive me. I'll be talking about her a lot for the next few weeks. And then I should bake her favorite cake and we should have it. What's your favorite cake? Um, something bird. What? She liked the banana split cake. Yeah, but it was something. It was like banana, bananas and whipped cream and strawberry milkshake. What's it called? Yeah, she loves strawberry milkshakes. Hummingbird cake. Boom. 
that's it. It's a white cake, but there's pineapple in it, and there's, um, you know, oh. do you think I should, let's make, I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make that, oh. we're gonna have that and celebrate her birthday. So she's up in heaven having fun. We can have a party down here, all right? That's, she's having her party, we're gonna have our party. Oh yeah, Ninja, we're having a party too. The Lord is kind of like, oh God, I need to send some angelic hosts down to her. Give her a little bit of a cushion there. She's she's like a little off today. <laughs> Anywho. All right, I'm going to finish with this. Jesus taught us to pray to our Heavenly Father. And if we look at how Jesus prayed, it was fervent, wasn't it? It was powerful. And it was often all night. How you guys like it if I start pulling some all night prayers? Huh? Tim Hortons, here we come. <laughs> Give us a big jug of coffee. We'll get a box of coffee. Yeah, well, we'll have to if we're doing an all night prayer section. By morning, he had won territories. He would go off, he would pray, but in the morning, he won territories. He maintained a stance in the presence of the Father. Always. Jesus always said what he heard the Father say, and he did what he saw the Father doing. Do you remember? That's what he would say in his word. He maintained a supernatural stance. See, do you know what I was talking about before? If we walked in the Holy Spirit all the time, Jesus did. Jesus was always supernatural. He was 100% supernatural, even though he was living in a body a fleshly bed. He was always supernatural. That's why anyone could stop him at any time and he was able to pray. Of course, he's God. But we have Jesus in us. And that same power, that resurrection power that was raised Jesus from the dead is in you. We carry his resurrection power. We got to start looking like it. We got to start looking like it. So he carried the presence of the Father. He maintained that supernatural stance, and he walked in it all the time, all the time. The Holy Spirit now abides in us as God's children, right? So we have to, we have to ask for God's presence. We have to get into his presence. We have to know that his presence is the power, really. That's what the power is to change and transform lives. Well, we're not doing anything. You know, sometimes people will call me and they'll ask me for my advice. I'm like, hey, you don't really want any advice. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because if I give you God's wisdom, you're going to do a lot better. And it's his presence and his power that's going to transform and change lives. I, I can't do anything on my own. But with God, I can do all things. Right? He doesn't just transform and change our lives. But when we share the gospel, when we raise disciples, when we train up disciples, then he transforms and changes other people's lives. Amen? And we must stay in this presence of God. We have to pray to allow the Holy Spirit to move in us. Let him move. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I don't want to get shaky. I don't want to get out of control. It's the best thing on the face of the earth. Move by his Holy Spirit. Amen? I'm going to stop there today. I'm going to mark with my pencil where I'm stopping. And uh, I was like, Lord, this is, a, um, this is a short message today. <laughs> He's probably like, okay, Maria. <laughs> All right. He's probably like, okay, kid, settle down. I just pray that this word, that this message touched your heart grasped your heart, and you will really start talking and thinking about how i got to stand firm. I can't just pray one time. Like, you know, when we pray for someone who's sick, we got to, and, and I've had to repent for this because I've had to say, Father, I've done this so many times. Like, I'll pray one time for somebody, and then I'm like, oh, the Lord heard my prayer. I went out, and no, the Father's like, did that person... Did you see it manifest yet? Did, it, did you see the, the healing manifest itself? I'm not talking about um, New Age manifestation. I'm talking about the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about, did you see that person get healed? 
Did you see that tumor fall off? Did you, did you see them get that result that is a, a non-cancer result? That's what I'm talking about. We've recently been doing that a little bit more. April and I have been having some bulldog faith. Tenacity in the spirit. And we're like, I'm not stopping until we see a breakthrough. We prayed for one of our precious people recently. We're not going to stop until we get the breakthrough. We're not going to stop until we get the breakthrough. Now, we also can't control things, in life, right? We can't control. So, like, sometimes you're praying for people who, um, like if you're praying, like if a family member calls you or a friend or something and they don't go to church or whatever, they don't really even have faith. So it's really hard. Then, then as the body of Christ, they're not going to maintain themselves, right? Like in prayer and fasting and they're not going to do any of that stuff. So guess who has to do it? Us. We're intercessors. And when I say that, because I feel like Jesus is our main intercessor, who are we supposed to be looking like? Jesus. We're all called to intercession. This particular church loves prophetic intercession. And that's what we do. That's our. That's who we are. But we're all called to intercede for each other and lift up the body of Christ. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you will just that this, this word would just be planted in the hearts of people today that hear it, that it will change their lives. I thank you, Father, that you only. By your Holy Spirit, transform and change lives. Holy Spirit, we need you to change us and rearrange us and to transform the things that are ungodly into the godly things. I thank you, Father, that we will worship you, we will praise you, we will follow you. We want to know how to be more like you, Father. We don't want to look like the world. The world has nothing to offer. We want to be your kids. We are king's kids. Our father is the creator. We want to glorify you. We want to glorify the creator. We want to do things the way you do things. Help us, Holy Spirit, stand firm. When we've done all that we know to do, help us stand firm. Help us be immovable by your Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own, but we're willing. Give us a willing heart. Help us. Help us, Father. Help us bring your kingdom of heaven here down on earth, Father. Let your will be done, Father, in our lives, our families' lives, and for those that we don't even know. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Did you did you like today? Did you feel blessed today? All right. Have a blessed day.